I'm Dr. Hildik Smith, and this is uh, Dr. Stankovic. Um, he is my co-chair for this session, but as he has a bad back, he will not be doing the sitting down. Okay, so he's, 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 not, he's not upset and he's not unhappy. He just won't be sitting down here. Okay, just to let you know. Um, and you are here to learn about contemporary treatment strategies for left main coronary artery bifurcation lesions, to reflect on practical cases, to learn from state-of-the-art imaging on stent behavior, and to learn about the usefulness of novel generation DES. I read that out, but I, you know that because that's why you came. Um, and we're going to start off, Goran, I won't talk more. Tell us what are the plans for the session. Uh, thank, you, my, uh, thank you very much, David. Uh, it's really a pleasure and honor for me to be here. And of course, it's a pleasure to co-chair this session with the uh, principal investigator of EBC main study. I think one of the most important studies in PCI arena and I hope for the best and I look for seeing results as soon as possible. I don't have any uh, potential conflict of interest to disclose, uh, but I think we should discuss today something that is really extremely challenging and that has some specific anatomical features. Left main bifurcation is slightly different from other bifurcations and what makes that difference are certain anatomical characteristics that we want to know and we want to take into account when we are planning and performing PCI procedure. First of all, it's T-shaped angulation uh, in uh, CT uh, 3D reconstruction. Average mean angle of the left main is 80 to 85 degrees compared to 60 to 65 for LED diagonal, for example. And then there is huge uh, caliber discrepancy between mother vessel, left main, and the ostium of the LED. Then this area is prone to development of uh, calcifications. Uh, ostium could be involved, which makes procedural planning even more complex. And side branch is circumflex, so side branch is uh, never small. So uh, main objective of today's uh, discussion is uh, learn about contemporary treatment strategies for left main bifurcation and reflect on practical cases of single and dual stand strategy and we will have opportunity to discuss various aspects from side branch access, protection, uh, decision regarding the stenting technique, stent optimization in particular, and of course possible use of imaging and physiology to guide the interventions. Again, we will use visible heart and uh, we can learn from state-of-the-art imaging on stain behavior in bifurcations. It's a software developed uh, in collaboration between Medtronic and the University of Minnesota, and we can study bifurcation procedures with the help of uh, Professor Burzota. And finally, uh, we should try to learn and discuss more the novel generation of DES, which is dedicated for large vessel treatment, resolute onyx, and specific characteristics which make this stand suitable for bifurcation PCI. Thank you very much for your attention. And we should start with the first presentation. Okay, so uh, we uh, have to deal with cases, but I will start with animals, which uh, sometimes uh, may, might be useful in understanding. So everybody of us want to know something more in, uh, in bifurcation PCI, and uh, a way which is very interesting is to see the bifurcations. And to see the bifurcations, I have the experience to, to do it in the Mayo building in the University of Minnesota, where there is this unique lab, the Visible Heart Laboratory, which is uh, <coughs> supplied by the Medtronic. And uh, he, he, there, there is the possibility to, de, to do something unique, which is to see the heart, which has, uh, due to a unique technology, the potential to beat again outside the body of an animal and even a patient. And it is connected to a machine that allows it 
to, to beat for around two hours. During these two hours, it is possible to perform interventions on the heart, having the possibility to see inside, since it, the supply is provided by a solution which is not blood, so it is possible with angioscopy to see inside. So I, I had the possibility to, to go in the lab, and this is uh, the chief of the lab, Paul Yates, so which is uh, really a, a, an outstanding it's researcher. It's in this lab, what I had the possibility to do is to uh, perform what is actually recommended by the European Bifurcation Club Group, so the provisional technique, according to a series of rules. The first rules is to perform crossover stenting across the side branch takeoff, selecting the main vessel sites according to the distality of the main vessel. This allows you to remove the, to reduce the carina shift. And then you should correct this by POT, proximal optimization, with appropriately sized balloon. Thereafter, in the case of side branch interventions, there is a lot of way to, to solve. But in it, what we know that it is important is to perform a distal rewiring, trying to get inside the distality, and then eventually performing the kissing balloon inflation. When you have long overlaps, it is also advisable to re-POT at the end. So this is uh, the visible art experiment uh, situation in which uh, you may see the bifurcations. Keep in mind uh, these uh, images because uh, you may see that uh, the bifurcated areas are not just uh, main vessel and side branch. You have the proximal main vessel, you have the two branches over there, and you have in the middle this uh, carina. Here is undiseased, it is usually undiseased, and this is tissue that may be easily displaced from uh, from a, a part to the other during our interventions. This is crossover stenting with the jailed wire according with the selection performed according to the distality of the um, main vessel. So you will see that when you do this selection, there is an anticipated drawback, which is this huge malapposition over there. This should be taken in, in mind because it is very easy if you do not correct to have a higher chance to induce distortion here and to rewire behind this stent struts. But the good thing is the fact that the carina has not been moved, so we have a malapposition, but the benefit is that the side branch ostium has not been affected. After that, it is important to perform a POT. Here is the face of deflation with POT. You see that there is full correction of the malapposition if you do it properly, if you reach the, the correct spot, the proximal part. And so this problem has been fixed and you are starting to treat the side branch since your stent struts will move toward the side branch due to the POT balloon. And you see here how Carina is now apparent. So this means that you displaced properly the stent struts inside the side branch ostium. This is perfect setup in the case you need to re-intervene for distal rewiring. To do this, you should go distally with your guide wire and then, which should be appropriately bended to scrub. And then as soon as you will have the carina, you will enter really into the distality of the uh, side branch osseum. And this will allow you, when you are going to perform the kissing balloon inflation phase, to have the best benefit of kissing balloon. I mean, if we do not reach this distality, we will even not remove the stent struts from that area. And uh, this is the phase in which, after balloon deflation, we come back with the balloon and we see this image. I mean, this is a really a fantastic result in my mind. The tubular stent, the last generation drug routine stent, has been modified. We have now the carina, which is perfect in, in place, and we have opened up really in a full way all the side branch osseum. So in this situation, it is, it is very easy to implant a second stent in the case we need. Another important part of the problem is the fact that provisional is something that may require a second stent to, to, to fix all the, the lesions. And we know that this stenting has the limitation of having the risk to protrude to lead too much inside the main vessel if we are not precise or to miss the ostium. This is the pitfall which happens more often because we don't want to have this problem. 
And this is what happens. I mean, if we try to attempt the distenting, but we don't want in acute angulation to have protrusion, we will have this gap. This gap, in the case there is dissection, in the case there is a lot of disease, is something which may not be probably acceptable. So in this situation, TAP is very suitable to optimize the result of bailout side branch stenting. And to do this, you should put your stent into the side branch and having the balloon in the main vessel ready for kissing, which is undeflated. Then you deliver the, uh, the stent with the balloon, which is still undeflated, and then you perform the kissing balloon inflation. It, if needed, you may repeat the kissing balloon inflation with a non-compliant balloon. This is the result you may achieve. I mean, it really is convincing about the fact that the neocarina might be sometimes really very acceptable. We should limit this, but for sure it is something that may be considered va valuable. Last insight we tested in the visible art regarding provisional is the fact that the main limitation for uh, use, systematic uh, use of provisional in nasty cases in which there is uh, a lot of disease is the fact that we have to implant a stent across the side branch having the risk of side branch occlusion. So all of us are uh, worried about not rescuing a side branch in which there is uh, the occlusion. But we have now a new technique, I mean, a new insight on the technique which may be systematized. Since we suggest to use systematically the jailed wire, there is now the potential to consider this as the highway to rescue the side branch, advancing a small balloon toward the side branch in the case we fail to reopen the side branch. When we practice the techni this technique, Usually we use small balloons, 1.5, and you see that step by step it is possible to go through the side branch behind the stent struts, especially if we did not perform a POT at very high atmospheres or there is, there is no long jailing. When, while you are doing this, you are starting to, dis to induce a measured distortion of, of the stent. So it is important that before inflating the balloon to rescue, to reopen the side branch, you prepare your POT balloon inside the main vessel. So this is what is recommended to put the undeflated balloon here while before inflating here the balloon to rescue the side branch. So, this is the situation in which we are inducing this deformation of the, st of, the, of the stent. So it is important to have this POT balloon ready here. And you see the important gap we create here. For sure, in some situations, some operator may consider this a good option to implant the stent according to the crash. We are in, in, the, I mean, in, in a step crash fashion, but also it is possible to continue our procedure according to the POT, to the, to the provisional, if we correct this with the re-POT. And this is what is done here. So you see that you may re-oppose the situation after having restored the uh, flow inside the side branch, then the balloon is removed and you are in line to perform, to continue your procedure with the vessel which is actually open after the elation, and you may end up with a good result with the, the uh, pullback rewiring and kissing balloon inflation. You see that the final result is very comparable to the other situation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. So let's open that up for discussion. If you have any questions or comments, I think there will be microphones um, around. If not, just shout out because it's a relatively small room so we can, uh, we can, all, we can all hear you. Um, these are amazing pictures. I mean, they really bring to life you know, what we're doing when we are doing some of these procedures. And I was, I was hoping you were going to show some of the awfulness that we can get with crush and techniques like that. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think that uh, to, to see in, a, in this way is something that helps you understanding what uh, you, you are doing. So uh, when you perform, uh, as, as soon as you get inside the more complex technique, you will see a lot of material going to have distortion. And uh, for sure it is 
I mean, I, I didn't show because I, I have the eight minutes, so I focused on what I think is really something that may impact more on our practice because uh, provisional is for sure the, the one technique which is most practiced. When you look at the result for the more complex techniques, you may see that if everything goes well, you may have really fantastic result at the end. The problem is that in each step of this complex technique, there is the possibility to have pitfalls. I mean, even with just one rewiring, which is required for kissing balloon inflation, you need to go into the distal cell to have this fantastic result. If you go prox proximal, you even do not remove the stent struts from there. So when you go inside the more complex steps, you increase the possibility of errors. So experienced operator in standard cases, I mean, I think that they are able to, to obtain a fantastic result in the visible art as in their patient without, uh, I mean, uh, any problem. The problem is that multiple steps makes the possibility of errors higher. And at the end, this in some patients may happen. Any question from the room? Uh, Francesco, my question is actually to uh, demonstrate advantages and disadvantages of other techniques except for just uh, provisional as initial one. You probably performed various techniques. Have you seen some major technical issues with any specific technique like DK crash culotte uh, compared to T and TAP? So the, regarding the, the, other, the other technique, I think that culotte, first of all, is recognized as a double stenting technique, but is basically a double provisional technique. This should be taken in mind because, I mean, when you see a lot of disease, a Medina 1-1 lesion with a lot of disease, you think, okay, I should stent both. I do, will not be, uh, care about the double layer stent struts in the proximal part, and I will do with the culotte. But basically, to perform correctly culotte, you should perform a provisional twice. You have twice the need to have this rewiring to have this fantastic result. So this is what I was anticipating. So when you have this, this technique, you have really to be careful in all the stages. I don't think that all the procedures are done so careful. I mean, sometimes the patient complains uh, uh, chest pain. I mean, we have to, to do decision in a fast track. And so I think that th this is the main pitfall. Culotte is double uh, provisional performed by an experienced operator in nasty cases. The, regarding the, uh, the crash, the, 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 the most important point is the fact that the Chinese group did a great, a great job to optimize this procedure because uh, I, I was in the arena when uh, uh, Colombo reported for the first time the crash and we started doing, but it was really very operator and anatomic dependent the final result. With the complexity induced in terms of steps by the DK crash, so performing a first, a first kissing and then another kissing at the end, the possibility to have a very good opening for the side branch that allows good expansion of the stent struts increases. But again, there is an issue with the rewiring. Again, with the kissing, when you, you are going to, to rewire the second times, if you take some of the struts which are around, you may induce some uncoverage inside the, the, the side branch. So these are, I think that culotte and DK crash are actually the, the most valuable yeah. uh, clinical practice technique. And they, they are complex. At the end, they may warrant fantastic results, but they may have pitfalls. This session is left main session, and uh, I said in the beginning, uh, mean angle is 80-85. Uh, if you compare uh, TAP with uh, DK crash culotte, uh, can you just put your own well, personal perspective on that? I, I, I didn't compare them in specifically in, in left main. Uh, I hope that we will have more and more data, but basically one of the main limitations, for example, for TAP, and T is the fact that when you have acute angle uh, bifurcation, you have higher protrusion inside. I think that in the setting of the left main, the fact that, uh, as you mentioned during your introduction, we are uh, in 
most often facing 90 degrees, 80 degrees angulation, facilitates the performance of this technique, while a little bit uh, may hinder the practice for the DK crash. But I mean, we have the DK crash operators in China, which are fantastic. They, they're able to do it with any kind of angulations. David, any questions? Um, no, no more questions. Yeah. No. Okay, so uh, if not, Francesco, thank you very thank much you. for excellent presentation. <laughs> and now uh, it's a pleasure to invite uh, our faculty, Dr. Guo, to demonstrate one of the Chinese uh, crush, mini crush stenting cases in the left main. Uh, uh, dear Chairman, even I come from China, but uh, this case uh, I didn't use DK crash technique, just the mini step uh, crash technique. So I do have nothing to to disclose. This is the patient history. The patient was a 55 years old male and came to the hospital with exertional chest pain for one year. And in recent 20 days, the chest pain has been aggravated. And uh, he had uncontrolled hypertension, uh, atrial fibrillation, but without any uh, anticoagulant therapy. And uh, echo was almost normal, EF was normal. And uh, he had uh, um, increased uh, uh, BMP, increased uh, troponin T, and uh, increased uh, uh, CRP. And so diagnosis for this patient was ACS. And this is the EKG, and uh, you can see this is a, uh, this was the atrial fibrillation, and uh, you can see slightly ST segment elevation uh, on these three and uh, AVF, and even uh, AVR a little bit, and uh, slightly ST uh, depression from uh, V4 to V6, and this is baseline angiographic. Uh, when we do spider view, and you can see uh, Medina 111 bifurcation left main lesion. And uh, from the other views, you can see very diffuse lesion from marginal to the ostium of uh, cirque, and also from mid LAD to the, uh, up to the left main disease. And uh, this is the right <coughs> coronary artery. The distal of the right was totally occluded. So next, uh, how should I treat this patient? We calculate syntax score one, it was very high, uh, 37, and uh, we also calculate syntax score two, and uh, capit, uh, a four year mortality of capit is a little bit uh, 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 lower than the uh, four year mortality PCI. So uh, how should I treat this patient? Can I stop here to, to sure. discuss? Sure, yeah, yeah, okay. you just, yeah. if possible, go back, uh, show us the videos running. Sure. So we can discuss, uh, yeah, that one. Dave, this is not good candidate for EBC main, I think. Huh? It's unfortunately the syntax score is a little it's high, a little high, a little it's high, because in that study, of course, we're comparing the one stent versus two stent strategies. But there's too much extra disease here, which would get in the way of understanding the difference between the uh, bifurcation techniques. So, le well, let's get the audience um, involved here. So. Hands up for a bypass operation. You want, what did you want? LAD, more LAD? Sure. Yeah. So there's quite a few hands for a bypass operation. Yes, okay. So we can ask that. Do you have any information on whether the uh, uh, no collaterals, because this patient was ACS patient. I, I guess uh, the copper lesion this time was uh, distal right. Yes, so that's what I was yeah. going to ask next, is who, who would like to open up the right coronary in this setting and then think about what to do with the rest? Yes, quite a lot of people for that. Uh, and who wants to treat the left main at this stage? Okay, nobody. No <laughs> Who wants to treat the left main later? A lot of people, most people. Yeah. So most people think the left main needs treating. Okay, but, and yeah. if and can you show us the left main again? Go back sure. one. So we are in a good session. We're in the right I, session. Yeah, Everybody's in the right I, session. I was, I was afraid for a moment <laughs> with CABG oh, yeah. voting. Okay, <laughs> and then if we look particularly on the, on the left at the... Uh, 
spider view. I think we can see that quite nicely. Who is thinking at this stage of a upfront two stent strategy? If I mean, assuming that let's let's just decide that for whatever reason the patient has to have some stents to the left main. Who's thinking of an upfront two stent strategy? Okay, some people. And who's thinking of a upfront one stent provisional strategy? Okay, right, great. Wow. You're all in the right session. <laughs> okay, uh, what, any other comments you think we should discuss? Anyone want to raise any yeah, other I think questions if, or comments? Yeah, if someone wants to uh, tell a little bit in more details what would be strategy, just uh, stratify between different available two stand strategies, not just uh, two stand strategies up front. I mean, TAP is also two stand strategy at the end, but you start as provisional, sure. leaving the option... Maybe we can ask Francesco. <laughs> is there a microphone? So, in my mind, when mm -hmm. Medina, by definition, is when you have 50 percent long disease in which, in which you may have higher risk and mm. of occlusion and situation in which there is really a 50, 60 percent probable to have uh, occlusion of the circumflex after crossover stent. Yeah. Uh, another question is, do we need imaging to plan and uh, perform this procedure? Who votes for IVUS? Who actually uses IVUS for left main? Yeah. Ah, okay. Pretty, what, uh, does pretty does there anyone number. want to explain why they think it will help? Uh, anyone who put their hand up for IVUS? What kind of information we are yeah, trying go, to go. gather? There's a, there's a microphone there, if you don't mind. Thank you. Use um, IVUS here, because I think there's a big size discrepancy between the uh, osteal LED and the LED, uh, sorry, osteal left main and the LED. It'll also give you um, uh, an idea about landing zone as well, it's quite diffusely diseased mid-LED. So. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> so chiefly for sizing on yeah. the, for you, okay? Yeah. It, my personal preference in this case would be to treat the right and then decide about the rest. What did you think? Yeah, yeah I agree completely. Yeah. Treat culprit first and yeah. then because of complexity and there are so many additional lesions, mm -hmm. it's not just the left main and then mm. you focus on left mm. main. There is marginal, there is mid LAD, so definitely requires a lot of uh, further decision making to be done so should we go on yeah i think uh, yeah we we see see thank you thank you what was actually yeah. done yeah sure sure so although the uh syntax score two uh on on capital group is uh, lower than PCI group, but uh, after we talk with, with families and uh, they they favor to uh, pci so first time we opened the right it was actually fairly easy and just the run through get wire and uh, pass the lesion uh, we open the uh, distal right as this and uh, we put two uh, resolute stents overlapping and uh, this is a, uh, the post PCI result and you can see this is a, a very nice result after the, the right and because the renal function of the patient was not very good so um, we stopped the procedure this time and uh, and uh, did the stage the left man uh, on the second time. So this time we used the seven French EBO three five uh, gynecastular trans femoral approach. That's not because we cannot use uh, six French. That's because the radio artery of this patient was 
almost occluded. So, so this time we use the trans uh, uh, femoral approach, and uh, to get where it goes to the distal uh, LED and uh, distal zerg, and uh, we use the 2.5 blown predilate the from uh, optimum LED to the distal lifeman. After that, uh, I love the idea of to use. Uh, I was to get the 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 PCI procedure. So as you can see, this is a, a distal reference. Actually, this is a vessel was nearly normal and uh, not very big, almost uh, 2.75. And this is a MLE site with very centric plug, a little bit uh, attenuated. MLE was 1.7. And uh, here, this is a uh, distal to the uh, first diagonal. You can see a vessel was getting positive remodeled and with very huge eccentric plug burden this way. And this is the ostium of uh, uh, LAD, and uh, this is a circ. And uh, this is a distal lifeman with very huge plug burden even after predilation. And plug burden here was 71%. And uh, this is a lifeman proximal reference. It's a very huge lifeman reference. And the uh, diameter was more than 5.5. So this is the whole uh, I was image uh, picture from mid LD to the proximal lifeman. And um, why I call this uh, Medina 111 region, not only from Andrew, but from Iowa, you can see, although the uh, lumen area of Austin uh, Cirque was okay, 4.29, but uh, with very huge plug burden, 75%. So so from Iowa, this is, uh, this is Medina 111 uh, lifeman region. So, should I stop here? <laughs> oh, I can move on. It, well, it's, no, it's a very nice to have the opportunity for, for people to, to think about it as, as we go. That's great. Does anyone want to raise any questions at this stage? Any thoughts? Is that a hand? No, it's just someone looking at his phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. You mean PDA? PDA was, f oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I think PDA was okay. Cause, uh, see, um, <coughs> so, yeah, but this is a, uh, this is a infection artery. So, so the function is not that important as an infected artery. Anyone have any comments or thoughts about the left main um, intervention from this point on, if you just go forward to where we are? So we've got a, a very large left main. It's 5.7 in maximum diameter, or certainly at least 5.5. .5. So if we are going to intervene on it, we're going to have to choose our stent carefully. Um, mm -hmm. Any comments on? strategy or any particular things spring to mind? Yes? Mm -hmm. You would need two stents. You need a separate stent for the... Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that's certainly something that they're going to need to consider. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but of course, if you... If, this, if the LAD is, let's say, four millimeters, then the that, that particular stent, let's say if you happen to choose the, the onyx, for example, that will go up to 5.5, .5, even possibly 5.7. So you, it may or may not be necessary. Okay, well, shall we just let you carry on? One You're, more sorry. question. Uh, you predilated left main because I was catheter couldn't cross, or you did it just to obtain better visualization? No, uh, it... it I just, uh, uh, because from angio, uh, osteum of uh, uh, LED and the left was very was, tight. Yeah, was very tight. Just uh, considering the patient might have ischemia. ischemia. So okay. I just uh, predilate from LED to left one, but not circ. Provide, yeah, 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 provide better flow and then image the artery. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Please go on. Okay. 
So according to this uh, small Lifeman uh, IWAS trial, and uh, as you can see, MLA of CERC uh, less than 3.7 uh, millimeter square, all plaque burden more than 56%. Uh, and uh, you can, uh, when you do a one step crossover, you can get a sum of uh, FFR less than 0 0.8. But uh, negative uh, 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 predicted value is 100. So, so we can understand this trial at the other way. So for this patient, even MLA was more than uh, 3.7, but uh, with very huge plaque burden at the ultimate circ. I think uh, this is the reason I choose two stand techniques. This is one reason. And uh, of course, uh, talking about uh, Dr. Chen Xiaoliang's definition on uh, trial, uh, from his uh, trial, this is a uh, 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 Definite as a, a complex bifurcation lesion. So, for complex bifurcation lesion, we should do two stand technique, but not a, a provisional a standing technique. Uh, another point is how to choose stand because of proximal reference of left fin was very huge. So, the stand uh, need to be very good via uh, uh, over expansion capa uh, capacity. So according to the uh, the stand uh, nowadays, we, I choose the integrity because it has the best uh, uh, capacity to uh, over expand it. So this is a procedure. Uh, I predilect uh, meet uh, IOAD and uh, got very good TME flow after. And uh, first, uh, uh, second diagonal was very huge, so uh, first uh, stand I choose the 2.7 uh, 30 integrity and uh, uh, use the geo blown technique to do this uh, LED uh, diagonal uh, bifurcation. And uh, as you can see, the stand expansion very well because I didn't use very high uh, high pressure uh, because of a small reference. Uh, uh, distal reference. So this is after we got very good TME flow of uh, second diagonal. Then uh, predilate uh, uh, marginal branch. Uh, this is a 2.530 integrity. And uh, next, uh, I I use a step mini crash technique. Uh, LED I used a 2.7 uh, NC blown, and the third I used a, a, a 0018 integrity. Integrity DS. I think for the step mini crash technique, the position of third stand is very important. You cannot uh, um, protrude the stand to the left man very much. So this is the position. And uh, uh, another uh, my another experience is when you this. Deploy the, the 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 stand of circ, and you need to pull back the stand long a little bit and uh, deploy the stand with a very high pressure here. So this is I think uh, this is very important for me. And uh, after that, I uh, this is a uh, withdraw the stand blown and uh, crushed. And uh, this is a full twenty six. Uh, integrity DES. This is after um, uh, standard employment. As you can see, the proximal uh, of LED not uh, expanded very well. Um, this is the reverse, and uh, I just uh, this is a video I just uh, uh, want to show. When you go to this wire, you you need to knuckle the wire in case uh, the wire not go goes under to the standard. Just knuckle the wire and it goes to the LED and. Uh, uh, Take it back a little and then goes to the uh, circ. So then open the circ and uh, do the step crash, very high pressure, and uh, this is the kissing. After that, uh, I did the, uh, with I was guidance, I did uh, post elation from um, mid LAD to the uh, 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 left man. And uh, we don't, we didn't have a very big uh, NC blown in my cast lab. The biggest uh, size was uh, five five O millimeter. So, but uh, according to I was uh, the proximal reference was huge, almost a six. So I used uh, two smaller NC blown <coughs> and uh, deployed at the same time as a, a 
bigger size of NC blown to do the port. So th this is what I did. And uh, after that, I checked. Uh, I was from both LED to Lifeman and the third to Lifeman. This is just the, the 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 measurements of the this is a uh, uh, Austin circ uh, 7.22 and this is Austin LED 8.8 and this is POC 8.2 and the uh, proximal edge of the stand you can see stand uh, expansion is very well almost uh, no metal position and stand expansion according to Dr Kang's uh, uh, paper, I think a, a stand expansion was uh, actually uh, can be acceptable. So this is a final result. This is final result, uh, Andrew. Okay. After that, the as you can see, EKG changed a little bit, and you can see Q wave and T wave inverted at L3 and the AVF. And uh, another point of this patient is post uh, PCI medication, uh, because patient have uh, 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 atrial fibrillation. We calculate chest two vascular. It was two. Has blood. It was three. And uh, uh, consider the complexity of coronary standing technique and the multivessel disease. So f at the first four weeks, I just gave patient uh, uh, DAPT therapy aspirin, a hundred. Uh, per day and uh, to calculate the uh, uh, 90 uh, uh, twice a day. And uh, four weeks later, uh, I changed the, the DAPD as clitoral grow uh, 75 and the rivoxiban uh, uh, 15 uh, per day. And uh, so far, it was almost uh, uh, four months patient doing very well. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's a lovely presentation. Thank you very much. So there'll be, uh, I'm sure there's lots of talking points um, there and people will have plenty to ask. I think you, you have a, a question you'd like to raise. Oh, uh, 3.5 and uh, 2.75. I think that's true, yes, and yeah. I, I think if you'd had a larger balloon available, you yeah. would probably have used it. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a non-compliant balloon either, yeah. you know, you could use a, a, a compliant balloon yeah, yeah. for the final pot, so it doesn't have to be non-compliant. Yeah, I agree, but uh, anyway, I checked the I was afterwards, so it uh, that expansion very well and uh, very, very well posed, so. <laughs> 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 but there is tissue behind. It's not like uh, in bench testing, you know. Yeah, so I, I fully real. understand. <laughs> yeah. And it was uh, actually because there was no uh, balloon available for single balloon. Yeah. Do you have questions? a comment Please. at the back? Yes. I know, I understand you, but uh, from I was approximate LED, not that big size, almost just the full, this is the one, and uh, uh, unfortunately in China so far we don't have 5 stand stand, just the full, the biggest, so that's why I choose integrity, it can be, you know, expanded very well. I know, but uh, from bench test of integrity, it can be expanded to the uh, 5.5 or 6. Yeah, I, I read the, the bench test. No, but you know, from I was, uh, it, we didn't find any acute stand fracture. We have the evidence. <laughs> 
These, it's all very good points. Thank you. You, you had a, a comment you'd like to make? I know what you mean. Actually, uh, in my pra daily practice, we have one, many, many very complex patients. And uh, the most uh, reason is this patient was relatively young. And uh, we, I've seen some uh, you know, patients in his or her 60s, when he came back, you, you almost have nothing to do to treat with the, 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 the de novo lesion, de novo artery. So that's why I, I want to treat him by PCR first. If, you know, in the future, if he did very well, that's fine. If not, I just uh, gave him enough time to, to do another cabbage. You know, I, you know what I mean. Patients will have a higher mortality yeah. <laughs> instead of bypass surgery. That's what we know. Yeah, but uh, but uh, but the, when the patient, you know, if the patient in his 60 or 70, probably I will send him to the surgeon. Culturally, He's culturally, what is the uh, uh, feeling of patients in China? Are they well accepting of the idea of bypass surgery or not very accepting? No. no, no, and no. also the patient, according to Chinese uh, culture, patient don't like. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have one technical question. Maybe I uh, didn't see well, but I have impression that you didn't pull out from the cirque when you did crushing of the stent protruding from cirque. Was it intentionally or you just uh, forgot to remove the wire from the cirque? When uh. you crushed with balloon, Ah, I know. Yeah. I know what you mean. Uh, uh, it's uh, intentionally because I didn't uh, 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 mean the how I say. I did very mini crash, so I didn't pull out of the third stand uh, very long. So no, no. So the wire, I know. I know. I know. Wire from the <laughs> yeah. So so that can be very easy to yeah. to take out uh, okay. the wire. Yeah. <laughs> And, and if I understood you correctly, um, you didn't uh, approach this with a double kiss? No. You, and, and any particular reason for that? Um, not, not necessary for the, the, the mini, mini crush, a nano crush that you did? Or? You mean, nowadays, <laughs> we have very good uh, DES, second generation DES, uh, very well. And uh, for this patient, I opened the, the set branch very well. So I don't think there is a need to do DK crash. Yeah. And one other thing I noticed, um, you left the balloon down the second diagonal when you put the stent in. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. is that something you do often? Yeah. Okay, the idea being that you're leaving a greater space there. Yeah. So yeah. the flow won't be that, limited. That was the point. Yeah. Anybody else do that? Should, uh, okay. What do you think? I don't like it. No. I like it as it's much. It's a little bit weird. I it's like a little it bit weird. As much, <laughs> as much as you like crush, I like jail balloon. Yeah. 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 I mean, presumably, this, you know, if you actually looked at it after you, the stent, after mm -hmm. you've taken the balloon out, it has to be risk of slight deformation mm -hmm. longitudinally or radially and yeah. perhaps some. Yeah, mala position. I, I know. Uh, uh, according to my experience, uh, if there was no very severe calcification proximally, uh, the balloon it can be very easily to take out. But if the patient have very severe uh, uh, calcification, I I will do do not do uh, that way. There is technique in which you actually partially inflate that balloon after deployment of the stent and then you repeat optimization proximally, but you just pull it to have space and keep uh, the yeah, diagonal branch open. Yeah, I just want open. to keep it open, yeah. want to have so a bigger space. you did space. not have intention to open yes. the balloon? No. Yes, Okay. One more question from there. Uh, afterwards? Um, sorry. Yeah, I did mean.
This is a uh, uh, see. This is a uh, ask him, sir. Coverage. Ah, I see. Fact, ah, I mean, ah. Uh, uh, if uh, he, he. If you, if you notice these are tiles, so what you do? Uh, if if I didn't, uh, I didn't cover the Austin Cirque totally. Not totally, partially. I mean, due to. Oh, also afterwards, probably I will check. Uh, uh, I think not only I was probably FFR. So yeah, if FFR is not going well, and I may do, I may do kissing, if there was dissection, maybe do uh, you know tap technique as you mentioned. Great case, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> now it's really a pleasure to call uh, my co-chairman David to present patient with left main requiring one stand strategy. Dave. Thank you very much. Yes, so this is from the other end of the spectrum in a sense. It's not a, well, all left main interventions are complex in some, some sense, but it, this doesn't involve complex technology. This is, um, <coughs> well, I'll let it speak for itself. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and I'm standing in for Dr. Yusuf, who's on the menu, but couldn't make it. Um, so, this is a patient who is uh, 83, came in with an acute coronary syndrome, a smallish rise in troponin, nothing terribly major, but had had troublesome symptoms of angina preceding this. This is his angiogram from uh, one of my colleagues. It's done from the leg, <coughs> tragically, so the wrong access point to start with, but we'll let him off. And this, these are the two key views, okay? So I'm now gonna play them side by side. And I think you can see on the left, um, we have a pretty chalky, lumpy lesion in the distal left main, which is unequivocally severe. And then on the right-hand side, I hope you can see what appears to be a critical lesion leading into the LAD and significant disease leading into three separate <coughs> circumflex branches. So in the spirit of what we've done already in this session, I may as well stop at this point and open it up for some comments. Questions or comments? Why specific technique or strategy should be recommended in this case, taking into account clinical presentation, but also anatomical features? I think so. I think here, I hope you can see it adequately. Just just right here, right at the distal left main as it goes into the, yeah, where the little hand is. Oh, further down. Oh, it's terrible, further down. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's not quite, actually, I'm sorry. There is a, I don't know if I, you, you get to see it later, but I don't want to move the slide on because it'll give the, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, 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 the mid to distal LAD is, I think, safe to say, diffusely diseased, quite poor quality. He's an elderly gentleman in whom we're not really considering a bypass operation. You know, it doesn't seem an appropriate Please. strategy for him. Yeah, so the trouble, the trouble with that, I mean, I, I don't know what other people think. Sorry, I can't get this left-hand film to play again. But the, on the left hand, you saw there's extensive disease within the body of the distal left main. So, you know, V-stenting would be essentially SKS coming back into the left main. I, 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 can't, I can't express any enthusiasm for it myself. But Yeah, at least for long-term outcome, we know for sure that SKS with long new metallic neocarina is bad with more than 6% late thrombosis. So this is what we, unless patient is really hemodynamically compromised, and in that case, uh, I, I would fully agree with you, 
if it's a rescue procedure uh, with uh, the simplest possible is to do this stenting with short proximal overlap, but this was stable patients, so uh, I think you could have uh, enough time to think of strategy and to plan and execute. Okay, well, so so let's open it up for a show of hands then. Who, who you're going to stent it, he's got angina, he's limited, he's been admitted, but who's going to go for a provisional strategy, which is essentially started with one stent, but prepared to sh use another stent if necessary. Okay, show of hands for provisional single. Okay, and a show of hands for uh, planned dual stent strategy from the outset. Okay, so fewer people. Yes, but a lot fewer people. Okay, interesting. So this was actually a case that was um, uh, done last year. It was done, it's a live case, and um, he was randomized actually in the in the EBC main study, and he was randomized to the single stent strategy. So, in many respects, the, the, the interest of the case is, is largely to do with the, the decision making and the, the, the original angiogram rather than the, the performance of the, the case as such, but I will take you through the performance of the case. Uh, the operators did rotablation to the LAD not down as far as the midpoint because it was becoming rather thready and small caliber by then. They undertook some IVUS, which was shown on the live meeting, um, inflated a small balloon to get some flow into the ostium and mid LAD, and then stented the LAD with um, what the record suggests is a 3.5 by 18 onyx stent. Um, and the next step, of course, is then not complex, not difficult, but you just have to remember to do it all in the right order. The pot is the, the critical part of this, really, so that once you've done the pot, you can then rewire into the side branch, decide whether you need to do any more. In this case, having done the, the pot technique in the left main with a, a 4.5 balloon, uh, the side branch was rewired, and the kissing inflation was done. The kissing inflation is done according to the, the distal reference vessel sizing, so 3.5 in the LAD, and I think it was a 2.5 or 2.75, I'm sorry, I can't remember, into the circumflex. So there's nothing fancy or complex about this. And this is the final result. So kissing inflation, I say final, this is, this is still an ongoing process, isn't it? It's a stepwise strategy. To, to go towards the, um, the, f the final <coughs> features. You can see the LAD is a pretty unpleasant vessel. You don't really want to get involved in any of that. Um, and I hope you can see it, was, it proved quite difficult for them to, to show the ostium of the circumflex very clearly now. But I think what, what they've successfully achieved here is that um, the procedure has been straightforward, simple. They've kept it as simple as possible. They haven't really done anything fancy. But in the end, with a single stent and a kiss, they've reperfused everything, got rid of the left main stem stenosis, got rid of the osteal LAD stenosis, and got a good result into the circumflex, albeit with a balloon only, and, and uh, preservation of all three branches. So not a fancy procedure, nothing clever about it, but just straightforward, stepwise, sensible decisions each way. And that, that, I think, actually is most of our left main interventions. Sometimes we get a little bit too caught up with, um, you know, technology and complex uh, procedures and stuff. And, but actually, I think this is the way to do the majority of left main intervention. Um, so that's all I have to say. I'm open to uh, discussion uh, and any comments. Yeah, please just uh, stand up and... But after the kiss, no, they didn't. No, no. And I think the LAD it, it, I agree. It does look like they chose to leave some pretty nasty disease in the LAD. But I think, 
on balance, they took a view that the whole LAD was diffusely diseased and calcific, and you know maybe getting involved in that would would cause trouble. The the the, the purpose of the intervention is to relieve him of his angina, and uh, this was a year ago, in fact, and he's been fine since then. So I think, you know, as it turned out, they took the right decision. Um, but I take your point. I mean, clearly the LAD is heavily diseased throughout. Next question. I'm afraid I don't, actually. I, was, I thought I, I couldn't understand why there wasn't one at the end, but there wasn't. I'm sorry. <laughs>
Ah, okay. Yes, yes. So this dates back to some data which came from the ICPS in Paris, uh, where they uh, found some cases early on of restenosis towards the ostium when they had not included the ostium in their stenting. But that's, I think, largely been shown now to be of historical interest only, uh, due to balloon overhang, etc. And I don't think anyone, correct me if you disagree, but I don't think anyone feels that you must go back to the ostium anymore. That's something which was, was in vogue for a little while, but there's no reason to stent normal artery just because it's in the left main. Do you agree? Yeah, okay, so I think we, we should, should stop. Okay, thank you very much for coming to the session. I hope you hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>